YSSE is the Young Statisticians Group in ISI, which was established in 2010. of Statistics, the most significant institute in the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, is a nationally recognized academic institution. Its humble beginning started way back 1952 when a statistical laboratory under the then College of Agriculture was established. It was considered as among the first organized institutions of statistics in the country. For several decades, the unit has transformed itself from a small service unit until 1998 when it was formally established as an independent institution. Currently, the Institute is one of the only two institutions in the country awarded a Center of Excellence in Statistics with the Philippines Commission on Higher Education. INSTAT has more than 30 faculty members and approximately 200 students. It houses a 100-seat lecture hall, four classrooms, and three computer laboratories complete with LAN, internet connection, smart LED TV monitor, LCD projectors, and open source and licensed statistical packages. It also has a separate reading room where course materials, textbooks, statistical reports of government agencies, unpublished special problems and theses, and journals are available for student use. To keep up with the demands of the country and in response to the K-12 program, the Institute in 2017 revised its Bachelor of Science in Statistics curriculum. While the new curriculum is still designed to provide a solid foundation in statistics, anchored in the balance of skills in statistical theory and methods, it now has opportunities for specialization with the addition of elective track courses. This is done to make a BS Statistics graduate flexible through exposure to the basic sciences to build a career in business, industry, academia, government, or pursue graduate studies in statistics and its allied fields. With its up-to-date curriculum, facility, and statistical softwares, the Institute produces competitive statisticians that have already been recognized in different fields. Its alumni continue to be prime movers in the academe, government, and the industry. Notable alumni include Mahalanobis Awardee, Dr. Isidora David, UPLB College of Arts and Sciences Dean Felino Lansigan, and Philippine Science High School System Executive Director Lilia Habacon. INSTA takes part in activities such as the SAS Academic Analytics Conference, spearheaded by SAS Institute of Philippines Incorporated, for which UPLB teams of BS Statistics students have garnered the Best Paper Award for two consecutive conferences in 2014 and 2017. In addition, the INSTA, together with the UP School of Statistics, jointly hosts the National Student Faculty Conference on the Statistical Sciences, 
an annual event to present scientific papers on statistical research and provide a venue for knowledge sharing and exchange and meeting leaders in the Philippine statistical system. Another yearly event is the Institute's anniversary celebration, which showcases a series of seminars and student faculty activities such as Instat Family Feud, Pasig Labach, Mr. and Ms. Tats, and Instat Sports Fest. We welcome you to the Institute of Statistics where you will surely experience the greatest academic life, highest student achievements, and most rewarding social endeavors. Hi everyone, I'm Marlene Weinauer from Statistics Austria. Austria is a country in the middle of Europe and... And I'm Rean Lynn Arlan from Institute of Statistics, University of the Philippines, Los Banos. And together with Marlene, we will be going to host this event or we are going to be your host for this event. So Marlene, while waiting for the other participants as well as the speakers, what activity did we prepare for the participants? So please go all to the website menti.com and enter a code shown on the screen here. And then you can ask. The, the menti will, yeah, it's already appearing. Here we have it. So please enter the code um, 8398898 and answer where you are from. Okay, with these questions, we can learn or we can know where do our participants come from? Do they come from Philippines, Germany, Thailand, Indonesia, or other countries? So all of the participants are encouraged and requested to go to menti.com and use the code A398898 and answer the given question. So now we have from the Philippines, Germany. We have from Indonesia. So out from the nine participants who answered the menti.com, uh, we have from Philippines, Indonesia, and Germany. How about the other participants? We have from Nigeria. Hi, from uh, Italian. Hi, Fatima. Hi, my from is Italian. Okay. So please uh, go to menti.com if you can, and then use the code and write your answer, please. Can you repeat the code? Okay, the code is 8398898. You can see Yeah, the code is Thank uh, you. reflected on the screen. You're welcome. So from our 11 participants, we have from the Philippines, Germany, Austria, Nigeria, and Indonesia. And then we have one earlier, Fatima, who came from 
Italy, am I right? We have from Montenegro. So as you can see, based on the word cloud, most uh, of the participants are from the Philippines. So for those who have just entered the Zoom meeting, welcome. So please go to menti.com and use the code 839-8898 and answer the question shown in the screen. For us to know, where do you come from? Okay, still no additional country. So the number, the, the counts just changes. That's why there's a change in the size of the word. So we have an additional one, Italia. But still Philippines has the bigger size or the size of the word. Okay. How many participants do we have now? I think there are so 26, 26, 26 participants in the webinar and 16 have already used the Menti. So the 10 others are also encouraged to use it if they want to. Thank you. Yes, please. Especially for those who just come in a while ago, we are, uh, you're all encouraged to go to menti.com and use the code 8398898 and answer the following question. So as of now, we have from the Philippines, Nigeria, Germany, Montenegro, Indonesia, Australia, Austria, and then Italy. And then still, most of the participants come from the Philippines. So and maybe while we are waiting for the others uh, to join the meeting and use the Menti, shall we have a little chat um, so you're oh, a member sure. of ISI. what do you want to talk about you're a member of ISI. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately i'm not yet a member but i promise you i will i will okay. in the year <laughs> this sounds great so what what encourages you to become a member of isi maybe because mara is here mara okay. is the chair <laughs> Mara is the one who keeps on encouraging us to join YSISI. <laughs> How about you, Marlene? Why did you join YSISI? Um, why did I join? Well, uh, last year I had the luck to be able to join the World Statistical Congress in Kuala Lumpur. It was so great. And then I decided to join ISI. It was so great to pe uh, meet people from all over the world. I, I really loved it and I'm very happy to be a member. Yeah, so Rianne, you're a statistician. What, what are you working actually as a statistician? Uh, actually, I'm teaching statistics in the yeah. University of the Philippines, Las Banyas. And then uh, most uh, subjects that I teach is about theory courses so far. And okay. then so, Currently, this semester, I'm teaching introductory to statistical theory. So I'm that's, handling statistics majors. That's really cool. Uh, and, and why did you decide to uh, study statistics? What, what motivated you to do that? It's not an easy because decision. Because of my mother. <laughs> ah, really? So she's also a statistician? Yeah. Okay. No, great. she's not. She's not a statistician. <laughs> 
She's working in DTI here in the Philippines or Department of Trade and Industry. She's the one who told me to enroll statistics for my college, uh, for my college course. So uh, I just followed my mother because she also said that when uh, statistics, when I'm in statistics, I can gain money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. That's definitely true. How about you, Marlene? What are you currently doing right now? I work in the statistical office of Austria. Um, I work in the department of methodology. So um, we support the other employees of Statistics Austria in statistical issues and we always have different projects at the moment. Also um, many projects with new data sources. It's very, very interesting. I think it's really an interesting job to work as a statistician. Yeah, I think that's also cool. And then I'm really looking forward to collaborate with you for some research. Yeah. Okay, let's check our monkey. So we have already 20 participants who answered our uh, question. And we have from the Philippines, Montenegro, Nigeria, Indonesia, Italia, Ecuador, Germany, and Austria. Okay, so, and still most of our participants are coming from the Philippines. I think we can now move on to the next question, uh, Mardine. So how about the profession? Yeah. Now again, using the same code and in the menti.com, please type your answer. Exactly, just use, um, use the code, submit your answer. I will do so too. Um, and write what you're working, so. Our, our speaker is um, about to enter, so. Okay, so we're just going to wrap this up, Mara. Thank you. Okay, okay so we have different, um, professions already here. Designer, okay, we also have designer, methodologist, college instructor, governmental employee, professor. Oh, we have many professors of statistics. Oh, so there are influencer, that's great. Oh, we have an influencer there. Um, urban planner, very interesting. Research. So we have an influencer here. <laughs> yeah, who, who is the influencer? What do you work as influencer? Could you explain it to us? I'm eager to know. Yeah, um, uh, the participant who answered influencer, can you please introduce yourself to us for a while? Okay, maybe he I doesn't think he or she is not around. Yeah, or maybe he or she is shy. <laughs> doesn't want to talk <laughs> you can yeah so you whenever you want to talk you can you can share with us what you're doing we're interested hello. okay hello ah. yeah hello i'm here oh i'm Hi. Roman. i'm sorry i cannot edit my name maybe the name has okay. been like i created my name so i cannot edit so I'm uh, Siddiqo Rahman. Uh, I'm working as an assistant professor in statistics department and in Bangladesh mainly, but right now I'm in Thailand and I'm doing a project here as a part of my PhD. So right now I'm maybe public health. I'm doing some public health research. So emphasis on the statistical modeling, something like that. That's very interesting. And my project is from Norway, so it's it's called Denklim and Dengue and Climate Effects on Dengue and Climate in Southeast Asia. So I'm working in Thailand and Laos. Yeah. Okay, Thank cool. You. Thank you. Thank you for introduction. Is someone trying to say something? <laughs> yeah, I was also wondering. I heard some voices. Does anybody else want to introduce himself? Or are we just hearing something, Marlene? <laughs> Maybe you're just, just hearing voices. 
can't be sure. Okay. So. Um, who else do we have? Okay, most of us are college instructors. And also, who is the designer? I would be interested in who is the designer. Can the person who wrote designer, do you want to introduce yourself to us? I would be really interested in what you're doing. Um, hey. I <laughs> I wrote myself as it's a designer <laughs> because um, sometimes as a official statistic I work for government of Indonesia and sometimes okay. I design the infographic about the data um, okay. to you you know disseminate data by infographic so I put myself in designer. <laughs> we acknowledge this. So cool. uh, and. Yeah, it's really interesting because to disseminate statistics, it's so good to have good methods and good graphs. It's worth so much. So did you study statistics or also design? Um, I'm interested in that. Okay, maybe he doesn't hear me anymore. Yeah, I think we only have five minutes left until the... Um, proper program starts only five minutes so we wait what uh, for the other participants to join the meeting we already have 37 participants and 21 who filled out the menti so rian how many participants yeah. will join there today okay based on the menti we have 21 but i think based on the list of the participants, let me count first. <laughs> we have 27 here, based on my count. So we have additional ones, so it's more likely less than 30 participants as of now. Okay, I think. Um... So I think that's enough, right, Marley? We have already learned so much about our, our participants. So most of them come from the Philippines, and then most of them are college instructors. Okay. So, how many minutes left, or shall we start the program proper? Uh, maybe we st uh, wait the last few minutes to start so that everybody has the chance to join the meeting. So you have a few last minutes to relax and watch a video, I think. We are the International Statistical Institute, ISI. A diverse and vibrant organization with a long history and a rich tradition. Our mission is to promote the understanding, development and good practice of statistics worldwide. This is reflected in our slogan, Statistical Science for a Better World. The Institute was founded in London in 1885 by 81 prominent statisticians from governments and academia. At present, the ISI family include members from over a hundred countries, seven international associations specializing in different areas of statistical science. Worldwide, we are linked with national statistical offices and societies, central banks, international statistical agencies, and we have consultative status at the United Nations. We provide a welcoming environment for advancing statistical knowledge and learning best practices, for sharing state-of-the-art developments, and for creating opportunities to network. Our flagship event is the biennial ISI's World Statistics Congress, where several thousand statisticians from around the globe meet to exchange and explore new ideas and to network. The World Statistics Congresses are organized by different countries 
and the hosts invest tremendous effort into making sure the conference is a memorable occasion for participants. Our Declaration of Professional Ethics provides a framework for statistical professionals to make individual decisions based on common values and experiences. We have prestigious awards to recognize the achievements and accomplishments of statisticians. We support members from developing countries to attend our many international conferences. We also develop and deliver other statistical capacity building programs, regional workshops, mentoring programs and activities to promote the careers of women and young statisticians. Become part of the ISI family. Feel connected to the worldwide community of statisticians and help build a better world through statistical science. Join us at isi-web.org. YSSE is the Young Statisticians Group in ISI, which was established in 2010. of Statistics, the most significant institute in the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, is a nationally recognized academic institution. Its humble beginning started way back 1952 when a statistical laboratory under the Penn College of Agriculture was established. It was considered as among the first organized institutions of statistics in the country. For several decades, the unit has transformed itself from a small service unit until 1998 when it was formally established as an independent institution. Currently, the institute is one of the only two institutions in the country awarded a Center of Excellence in Statistics with the Philippines Commission on Higher Education. INSTAT has more than 30 faculty members and approximately 200 students. It houses a 100-seat lecture hall, four classrooms and three computer laboratories complete with LAN, internet connection, smart LED TV monitor, LCD projectors, and open source and licensed statistical packages. It also has a separate reading room where course materials, textbooks, statistical reports of government agencies, unpublished special problems and theses, and journals are available for student use. To keep up with the demands of the country and in response to the K-12 program, the Institute in 2017 revised its Bachelor of Science in Statistics curriculum. While the new curriculum is still designed to provide a solid foundation in statistics, anchored in the balance of skills in statistical theory and methods, 
it now has opportunities for specialization with the addition of elective track courses. This is done to make a BS Statistics graduate flexible through exposure to the basic sciences to build a career in business, industry, academia, government, or pursue graduate studies in statistics and its allied fields. With its up-to-date curriculum, facility, and statistical softwares, the Institute produces competitive statisticians that have already been recognized in different fields. Its alumni continue to be prime movers in the academe, government, and the industry. Notable alumni include Mahala Nobis Awardee, Dr. Isidore David, UPLB College of Arts and Sciences Dean Filino Lansigan, and Philippine Science High School System Executive Director Lilia Habacon. INSTA takes part in activities such as the SAS Academic Analytics Conference, where headed by SAS Institute of Philippines Incorporated, for which UPLB teams of BS Statistics students have garnered the best paper award for two consecutive conferences in 2014 and 2017. In addition, the INSTA, together with the UP School of Statistics, jointly hosts a National Student Faculty Conference on the Statistical Sciences, an annual event to present scientific papers on statistical research and provide a venue for knowledge sharing and exchange and meeting leaders in the Philippine statistical system. Another yearly event is the Institute's anniversary celebration, which showcases a series of seminars and student-faculty activities such as Instat Family Feud, Pasig Labach, Mr. and Ms. Tats, and Instat Sports Fest. We welcome you to the Institute of Statistics where you will surely experience the greatest academic life, highest student achievements, and most rewarding social endeavors. So, hi everyone. I'm Marlene Wenner from Austria, a country in the central of Europe and I'm statistician in the National Statistical Office of Austria. And? Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm having a problem with my mute button. So again, I'm Raelan Arlan from University of the Philippines Institute of Statistics. And together with Marlene, we'll be hosting this event. Okay, so uh, we are very happy to welcome you all in this joint webinar of Institute of Statistics and an International Statistical Institute for Young Statisticians entitled Data Science for Official Statistics Using R Software. We really have a great speaker today. We have Dr. Elena Zarova, and then we are very excited to listen to her talk, and I'm sure you are too. So before we start, uh, let me say welcome to this event and then welcome the participants from all continents and from other countries. Yeah, also welcome from my side. We hope everyone, wherever you all are, is safe in this pandemic situation. Yeah, before we start, I'm sure you're already eager to learn, but before the proper start of the webinar, let us introduce you to some rules to have a comfortable webinar today. We found a nice video, so let's check this out.
So yeah, please keep to these rules. Please unmute your mic while you're not speaking. Thank you very much. And now we can really start. I'm very, very happy to introduce to you the chair of Young Statistician ISI, um, Ms. Mara Sherlin Di Talento. She will give the opening remarks to you. Hello, good day, everyone. So first of all, good day to our speaker, Dr. Elina Zarova. Um, thank you very much for your time and effort. Uh, this webinar will not be possible without your help. I am very thankful to the ISI community for always thinking of ways they can extend their help and expertise to the Young Statisticians community of, community of ISI. Thank you very much. And then good day to our moderators too, Dr. Maria Filova and to the Chief Specialist El Elvira Dubrovs Dubrovsky. It is an honor and with great pleasure to have you here with the support of the Analytical Center by Moscow City Government. Thank you very much. I would also like to acknowledge um, Dr. Felino Pilan-Sigan and then Dr. Lisa and Comilla for the help of, um, of for the help in helping us to um, create this um, webinar. And then to the Extension Committee of the Institute headed by Professor Raman Sito G. Campbell. Thank you very much for co-hosting this event from registration to coordination up to the program proper. Thank you very much. And to all our participants, good day. So one of the goals of Young Statisticians is to provide a networking forum for students, postdocs, young researchers, and professionals dealing with all fields of statistics. So to discuss and share ideas and researches with the statistical community at large, we, or in short, the YSISI exists to bring together career young statisticians around the world and to help support their career de development and enjoyment. So to achieve the mission and vision, we facilitate regional workshops, the scientific program, and then short courses like this and the social events. So this year, um, we envisioned to have a regional workshop here in the Philippines, but because of the current situation, we shifted to virtual workshops like this. So I hope in the future, we can meet face to face again and be able to welcome you personally. If you would like to know more about our group, please visit our website at www.ys-isi.org. So without further much ado, on behalf of the Young Statisticians Committee of ISI, together with the whole organizing committee, we welcome you all to this training workshop on data science for official statistics using R. Okay, thank you very much, Mara, for that warm welcome. Now, after hearing from the chair of the ISIYS, let's hear some message, welcome message, from the UPLB Chancellor, Dr. Fernando C. Sanchez, from the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, UPLB, Dr. Filino Pilansigan, and from the Director of Instat Class UPLB, Dr. Lisa N. Comilla. To the Dean of the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, College of Arts and Sciences, Dr. Felino Lansigan. To the Director of the Institute of Statistics, Dr. Lisa Comia. To our esteemed resource person, Dr. Elena Sarova. And to everyone joining us today, good morning. I am pleased to welcome you to this webinar workshop on data science for official statistics using our software. This event is being held in line with the National Statistic Month's team, Bridging Digital Gaps, Making Information Available to All. These days, more than ever, access to information is critical. This has been made apparent in the ongoing pandemic, where lack of reliable information on COVID-19, treatments, and modes of transmission holds back the effort of countries all over the world to effectively address the crisis. Through finding ways for the disadvantaged and underprivileged to receive important information and distilling and interpreting complex data for the public, statisticians play a crucial role in the development of society. This webinar, organized in collaboration with the Young Statisticians of the International Statistical Institute will introduce students of statistics 
to one of the most useful tools of their future career. I therefore encourage everyone to fully participate and make the most of this opportunity to grow one's knowledge and skills. I wish everyone an insightful and inspiring webinar. Maraming salamat at mabuhay po tayong lahat. Uh, greetings to all participants in this two-day webinar workshop on data science for official statistics, the use of our software to be held from October 28 to 29, 2020. In behalf of the University of the Philippines, Los Banos, or UPLB, let me welcome you all virtually in this webinar workshop. Let me also greet the Filipino statistical community for the meaningful observance of the National Statistics Month this October 2020. I wish to commend the UPLB Institute of Statistics, or INSTAT, and the Young Statisticians Group of the International Statistical Institute, or ISI, for initiating this collaborative activity as part of the observance of the National Statistics Month. Let me also take this opportunity to express our sincerest thanks and appreciation to Dr. Elena Sarova, a renowned statistics professor from Russia, for sharing her time and expertise in this workshop. This webinar workshop is very timely as data science is an emerging field and is very much needed to extract information from data and databases from different sources and will be useful in generating official statistics. These are crucial in planning and implementation of government projects and programs, as well as in the monitoring and evaluation systems at the national as well as local levels. As we all know, part of the tasks and responsibilities of governments, both at the national as well as local level, is the assessment of the level of achievements of the Sustainable Development Goal, or SDGs the monitoring and evaluation of development priorities such as food security, poverty alleviation, health and sanitation, environmental security, including climate change, and disaster risk reduction and management, among others, involves dealing with a lot of data, including the use of official statistics. As we are all aware, the advances in science and technology such as statistical science, geographic information system, optimization techniques, simulation modeling, databases, have enabled the integration of knowledge from different sources and disciplines to address and solve practical problems. It is interesting to note that data science has also provided opportunities for our young statisticians, not only in the Philippines, but also in other countries to help contribute in the development of data science in many ways. This include defining protocols for data acquisition and processing, developing expert systems, algorithms for data analysis and processing, extraction of information to generate and supplement the official statistics. Data science should help improve the generation of special statistics for more informed and evidence-based decision-making. I hope that this collaboration initiated through this webinar workshop will be sustained through follow-up related activities such as training, perhaps exchange basis among young statisticians, collaborative research activities, and the like. I also hope that we can meet each other pretty soon, face to face, in the near future. Again, we wish to thank the young statisticians of ISI for the support to and the collaboration with the Institute of Statistics. I wish you all a very successful webinar workshop. Thank you and good day to one and all. University of the Philippines, Los Baños Chancellor, Dr. Fernando C. Sanchez, Jr., College of Arts and Sciences Dean, Dr. Filino P. Lansigan, 
International Statistics Institute Council member, Doctor of Economics, Professor of Statistics, Honored Scientist of Russian Federation, Chief Scientific Advisor in Dikaner Russian University of Economics, and Deputy Head of the Analytical Center by Moscow City Government, Dr. Elena Sarova. Ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant day to all of you. From the Institute of Statistics, we welcome all of you to this training workshop on data science for official statistics using our software. We are indeed fortunate as we celebrate the National Statistics Month this year here in the Philippines for this very significant activity. As we find ways to improve lives using statistics, we also bridge the gap across countries with this collaborative effort between the Institute of Statistics and the Young Statistician of the International Statistics Institute. This will not be possible if not for our very own professor, Mara Sherdin D.P. Talento, the current chair of the YSISI. Our gratitude to the speaker, Dr. Sarova, for gracing this event, and the moderators, Dr. Maria Fralova, World Bank Consultant, Fralova EDU Director, methodologists and specialists of the Analytical Center by Moscow City Government, and Elvira Dubravsky, Chief Specialist of the same Analytical Center, and all the people who worked hard to make this event possible. To the participants, congratulations for being the chosen few, and may you make the most out of this event by putting to good use the knowledge you will gain in this two-day training workshop. Thank you. Thank you all for these warm welcomings. So we, we have a few announcements for you. The first announcement, if you have a question, please use you and a Slido for questions. Um, we will put the, li uh, the link in the chat. Um, just click on the link and use this code 64133. It's also in the chat. And there you can ask your questions. We try to answer them as soon as possible. And then we have another announcement. Um, there will be a task today in the in the webinar. Um, if you want, so there will be a task you can do at home, a home task. And if you want to receive a certificate for your participation in this webinar, please submit this home task. We will send you an email later on with instruction, instructions in how to submit it. And finally, at the end of the session today, we will ask for volunteers who would like to present their work tomorrow in the workshop. I think this is a great chance for everyone to show their work. And so think about doing that. Thank you. And of course, for the promotion of our event, we have an activity called Selfie with Logo. So in this activity, all of the participants are encouraged to post a selfie in your social media accounts and then use the official hashtags data science for official statistics using our software and then hashtag YS underscore ISI underscore for R and then hashtag instat for R. So how are we going to do this game or to do this activity? First, you need to uh, download the background photo for your selfie, and then you can find it in the Google Drive with the file name Selfie with Logos. And after you've uh, downloaded the background photo, make it as your virtual background in the Zoom. And after making it as your virtual background, oh, you need to take a Snapchat or a selfie of yourself with the uh, background photo as your back, uh, with the logo as your background. Okay. And for the general rule, uh, your post must be public or your profile must be public for the organizer to see your post. And the one with the highest likes or reacts or share would have a chance to picture with our key speaker, Dr. Zarova, and your post will be uh, published or posted and uploaded in the Young Statisticians website. So we are really looking forward for your social media post and please make it creative. And now without much ado, I'm sure you're all excited to know our key speaker, 
may we call on Ms. Mara Sherlyn Talendo to introduce our speakers and moderators. Okay, um, thank you very much for that, um, Rian and uh, Marlene. So let's um, introduce our speaker. I am very honored to introduce our speakers to you for today. So our speaker is an ISI council member, an ISI elected member, doctor of economics, professor of statistics, honored scientist of Russian Federation, Chief Scientific Advisor in Flenakov Russian University of Economics, Deputy Head of Analytical Center by Moscow City Government. Um, please welcome Dr. Professor Elena Sarova. And also I'm going to present to you our moderators for today. Um, she is an Associate Professor, World Bank Consultant, uh, Frilova EDU Director and Methodologist, Specialist of Analytical Center by Moscow City Government, and ISI Regular Member. Please welcome Dr. Maria Frilova. And then, of course, we also have the Chief Specialist of Analytical Center by Moscow City Government and also an ISI Regular Member, Elvira Dubrovsky. So welcome all in this um, webinar. Um, Dr. Elvira, the, the mic is now yours. So we're going to start our discussion. Um, to the participant, please be minded of our house rules. Please um, keep your mic muted. And then you can you can use the slido.com for your um, quick questions. Thank you. Okay, we can start, yes? Yes. Okay. Uh, good morning, dear participants of the workshop Data Science for Official Statistics using R software. My name is Yelena Zarova. I'm Doctor of Science, Professor of Statistics. I work uh, in Plekhanov Russian University of Economics. Sorry, one moment, please. Normal, Is everything okay with presentation? Они меня не видят, не слышат. Окей. Дорогие коллеги, now we are in Plekhanov Russian University of Economics. Uh, historically, it is the first economic university uh, in the Russian Federation. It was founded more than 100 years ago. And uh, we are in uh, the situation center of this uh, university. Uh, it is uh, the center of uh, data resources uh, for analytics and uh, forecasting of the Russian regional development. Um, Last year, we presented uh, the course, the author's course, uh, Statistical Methodology in Data Mining, with the participants of uh, the specialists of Russian Federal Statistical Service, of analytical centers of Moscow City government, of Russian, Fe Russian federal government. And this course, Statistical Methodology in Data Mining, uh, was uh, the basis for the development of a new course data science for official statistics. 
The purpose of our workshop is to present a set of data science methods using our packages uh, for implementation in practice of official statistics to increase the efficiency of statistical observation and data processing. We close cooperate with the Russian Federal Statistical Service, ROSTAT. Uh, our, our university cooperates with uh, ROSTAT many years, and uh, we participate in uh, development in uh, the process of implementa implementation, data science tools and algorithms for processing, analysis, visualization of uh, microdata of sample surveys. Uh, it is a real uh, practical work of ROSTAT, of Russian Federal Statistical Service, the implementation of new tools of data science tools and algorithms, algorithms uh, for processing and analysis, the aggregation of microdata of some sample surveys, household income survey, labor force survey, household hold budget survey, and some others. Rostat conducts them according to the international standards. But I think and I'm sure that these methods may be interest not only for specialists in national statistical offices, but also for research in various fields of processing, integration, and analysis of multidimensional data sets. First of all, about what is data science? Data science is a science. It is a field of science. It is an interdisciplinary field of science and the subject of it is extraction of meaningful information from structured and unstructured data. Data science is based on the combination of knowledge in a specific field of science. It can be economics, ecology, sociology, uh, sociology and some others. And it uh, is based on the theory and methodology of mathematics, statistics, data engineering, programming, and data visualization. Data science is inter inter interconnected with statistics and data mining. And we mean not only theoretical statistics, but, but of course, uh, official practical statistics collection, process, and integration analysis of data uh, in official statistics for the purposes for users, government, business structures, population at whole. And data science in, is interconnected with data mining. Data mining is a part of knowledge of data. And uh, the basis of it is machine learning tools. Statistics. Statistics is a discipline that concerns the collection, organization, analysis, interpretation, and presentation of massive data. And data science versus statistics uh, is a sphere of connected with statistics, but uh, and different with statistics. Statistics uh, includes two parts, descriptive statistics, and inferential statistics. And both of them are based uh, now, now in reality, uh, it be, uh, they are based on structured data of total and sample surveys. And uh, statistical research, statistical analysis uh, are based on uh, predetermined hypotheses. For example, uh, normal uh, law of uh, distribution, log normal law of distribution, and some other predetermined hypothesis for statistical research. Data science deals with structured and unstructured data using data mining technologies, including coding, processing, missing data, outliers, analysis in, on the basis of integration information, interpretation of it. Data science extracts patterns, a priori unknown and unforeseen invisible structures and models of the investigated object. 
data science and data mining provide processing analysis of rapidly growing volumes of data. Now, Russian official statistics faces with new reality, the rapid growth of new resources of data. You can see the strategic plan of information development of the Russian Federal Statistics Service and rapid growth of share of streaming data collection, big data, administrative data, and uh, the emergence of unstructured data in practical statistics, as well as, the, as integration of large arrays of structured data, makes it necessary to use data science methods in practical statistics. We close cooperate with Rostat uh, in this sphere with two departments. Department of Labor Statistics and Department of Household Income and Expenditure Statistics. And uh, they both use new resources of data, statistical uh, services, uh, the results of statistical services by mobile, mobile phones and internet, administrative data. And uh, they implement in their practice integration of microdata arrays of various sample surveys. Uh, we uh, use the theoretical basis, uh, the publishing works of uh, different statistical and their systems. Here you can see some publications of Eurostat uh, about concerning the big data and um, analysis uh, from uh, data resources of different operators. Uh, other resources of uh, big data, and uh, five well-known characteristics of big data, 5V. Uh, this is uh, the presentation of re resources of data, uh, electronic payment data, mobile phone, sensor data, uh, price data, textual data, uh, also, it is uh, the reality of Russian official, uh, official statistics. And also, uh, we start to use these uh, resources of data and to implement new data science tools and methodologies. Methodology. In uh, European countries, uh, they are uh, you, you, uh, they are using uh, the new R packages. R packages, uh, R packages uh, for dealing with streaming and big data. Uh, here you can see the packages uh, for preprocessing of streaming data for seasonal adjustment. A number of conference, uh, conferences dis uh, discuss um, the problems of use R and data science methodology in official practical statistics. Uh, some months ago uh, in, Amsterdam, in Amsterdam, Amsterdam, in Holland, there was a, an official conference of use R in official statistics. It was the eighth international conference and we made a presentation, application of data mining methodology in Russian official statistics. So the uh, object of our workshop is uh, show to present uh, the new methodology which uh, use in reality, uh, which can be used and, uh, and which is uses in uh, reality in Russian official uh, practice of statistics. Our uh, course consists some points, some steps, pre-processing data uh, on, with the use of R packages, dealing with missing data and outliers. Uh, then uh, the technologies of statistical matching, the micro data of two sample surveys, labor force survey and household income survey. Uh, the random forest technologies for regression, classification, dealing with outliers, and uh, at last, the cluster analysis uh, for reveal, uh, revealing of significant variables from survey. 
pre-processing techniques with R packages. Uh, we need to uh, load data and uh, uh, on our slides, you can see uh, the comments of R, uh, the uh, packages and libraries uh, for uh, realization, uh, some techniques of data science. And here you can see two Excel files, uh, the fragments uh, of uh, LFS labor uh, of LFS uh, sample survey. LFS means labor force survey. And uh, this is a fragment with 300 units, but uh, the micro data uh, of year labor force survey includes uh, more than 360,000 uh, units. So on the basis of small fragment, we will see the data science technology of pre-processing this information. Uh, you can see the format for loading uh, from Excel, the comma separate values format. This is uh, the Excel uh, file, uh, initial Excel file of labor for survey uh, data at, and it includes 300, uh, 300 units. Every row is uh, the answer of one respondent, and uh, this respondent character, uh, has characteristics of uh, his or her uh, economic activity, demography uh, characteristics, or social characteristics. Uh, so many features uh, which characterize this respondent of this unit. We create new file, new project, and uh, we get uh, an object ORS1. You can see all comments, and uh, here and on other slides, you can see all comments for the work with our packages. These comments uh, allows us, allow us to uh, view uh, the whole table of the information and uh, first and last rows, first six and last six rows. Characteristics of our units. Uh, every unit uh, has uh, following characteristics, gender, age, uh, marital status, the level of education, uh, forms of work according to the resolution of 19th International Conference of Labor Statisticians, which was conducted by the international labor organizations. These characteristics include uh, some points. It could be manufacturing activity for own use, employment, unpaid training work, or voluntary work, or other work activities. Uh, other characteristics, employment type, main or additional work, place of main work, the enterprise uh, in the organization, at the enterprise for individual entrepreneur, on the farm, hired by individuals, or in uh, own household. Also characteristics of work time, the actual du duration of the working week at the main job, in hours, normal working week at the main job hours and some others. The function class allows us to, uh, to define the type of a variable. Here you see the some types integer and some uh, factors uh, has a type factor, uh, character, uh, uh, type factor.
Loading data, data into R. Commands for filling in missing values and uh, calculating descriptive statistics. Analysis of joint distribution of variables uh, characterizing the features of, the, of observation units and methods for dealing with statistical outliers. We use uh, variables, the actual duration of the work and week at the main job, normal work and week at the main job, and actually worked of additional work in the, in the survived week. Also, gender, male, female, and levels of education. Function summary allows us to uh, calculate descriptive statistics. Uh, and here you can see the results for numerical variable. Uh, this is the actual duration of the working week at the main job. Uh, function summary allows us to uh, estimate minimum value, first quartile, median, average value, third quartile, maximum value, and uh, number of missing values. And uh, uh, also the descriptive statistics for categorical uh, variable, uh, the distribution by it features. Uh, function hist. Functions hist uh, uses in official statistics uh, for creation of histogram. And here you can see uh, the histogram uh, of variable, uh, the actual duration of the week and week at the main job. The mode is uh, approximately uh, 40 hours. Uh, and you can see the distribution of these values. Missing value. Missing value uh, can skew the aggregates of sample survey results. Uh, there are many publications uh, according to the procedures uh, to the fillings of missing uh, values. And I can recommend uh, the uh, very uh, useful publication, amazing and very interesting, amazing journey to robust statistics, discovering outliers for efficient uh, prediction, the author uh, MIDI. Uh, and uh, there are four uh, types of uh, missing values. They are presented with explanation. Missing completely at random, uh, missing at random and missing not at random. Uh, we can, you can see the explanation and these types determine uh, the methodology of dealing with missing values or with our packages. The function uh, AGGR allows us uh, to construct distribution, distribution of missing values. Uh, the proportion of uh, missing, missing values in a uh, whole uh, data set and uh, the combination of uh, proportions of miss missing values of some variables. It gives us the characteristics of distribution of missing values, all uh, factors among the data set. Function margin plot. Uh, it combines two box plots uh, and it shows of, uh, the distribution of missing values in combinations, uh, the combination of box plots of uh, missing values of two variables. Uh, here, uh, the actual duration of uh, main job and uh, the work and week of, uh, of main job and uh, the duration of work and week of normal work. Uh, our packages allows us to use uh, four methods for replace missing values. The first method is uh, to delete rows, removing all rows containing missing values. The second one uh, allows us to replace missing values with generalized indicators. Uh, mean or median, 
The third one uh, we use to replace missing values on the basis of uh, estimation of correlation of variables. And the fourth method uh, allows us to replace missing values with the nearest neighbor method. The first method. Uh, for the first method, we use uh, function, uh, some functions, you can see them. And uh, we, uh, the function uh, allows us to see uh, the number of uh, missing, uh, the number of uh, removing rows. Now they are six because in six rows we have the missing values. Uh, function n a dot omit. First method uh, needs two packages. Uh, need uh, the package uh, DMWR and a DMWR library. You can see and use uh, the functions for uh, extracting and removing the missing, uh, the, value, the rows with missing values. Second method of replacing missing values is based on the algorithm for imputing generalized indicators, mean or median. Uh, we use the function preprocess, and here you see the result. The new uh, object uh, or R S six or S it uh, the new object after uh, the replacing missing values by the mean or mean. Uh, the third one, uh, the third method uh, is based on uh, the estimation of correlation and regression uh, links, uh, correlation and regression analysis using the LM function. Uh, here you see uh, commands and the result of estimation of parameters, parameters of regression models. The first one consists the dependent variable RBVRFO1. Uh, this is the duration of work and week in hours. And uh, the predictor RBVR knows the duration of uh, normal work and week in hours. The second model uh, has the same dependent uh, variable and the predictor uh, the duration of work and week in additional, at additional workplace. Uh, in the table, uh, you see the parameters of both uh, regression uh, models and the estimation of adjusted R squared coefficient, which uh, shows us that more uh, is the first model and we will use it for the, the, for the uh, procedures with missing values. Uh, here you see the commands for imputation, the missing values uh, of uh, the RBVRF01 variable with the values obtained from regression functions uh, with uh, the RBVR NOS uh, predictor. As a result, we uh, get the new object uh, or RS7. And for every new object, object we uh, use the function summary for the estimation of descriptive statistics. The fourth method, the fourth method for replacing missing values is based, is based on the clustering method, K, uh, K and N method. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, apply the function preprocess and uh, get the new uh, object or S9. Uh, but uh, uh, it consists the standardized uh, values of our uh, variables, and we uh, should take it into account when we will compare the results. Here we see the results of uh, estimation of descriptive statistics 
follow new object after the after uh, the procedures of removing or uh, exchanging the missing values. Uh, four methods for uh, blocks of results. How to compare? For, compare? for comparison of the results, we use uh, the T uh, criteria, criteria and uh, uh, student uh, T criteria, and it shows us uh, that uh, the significant difference of mean value for our uh, variable, uh, for our target variable RBBRFO1, uh, and it uh, means that we should analyze the distribution for uh, making the decision about the more uh, appropriate uh, method. Uh, our packages uh, and our system allows us to create box plot uh, for every variable and uh, uh, with the distribution of uh, characteristics of this variable. Here you see uh, two box plots uh, for our uh, variables, for variable RBVRF01, and uh, it uh, depends on uh, the predictor variable, uh, the gender of our units. And uh, the right uh, plot demonstrates the uh, distribution of RBVR F01 variable uh, according to the uh, uh, levels of education, uh, the distribution of duration of work and week uh, according to the distribution of educational level of employee. Uh, this is uh, the charts uh, which uh, shows the violin uh, charts uh, also the dependence of uh, two variables and uh, characteristics of uh, curve of distribution and box plots. In this table, there are comments for the creation of violin charts, and uh, it's very effective tool for uh, analysis of joint distribution of two variables. Outlies. Outlies also is a very important issue for the official practical statistics. And it uh, outlier is defined as observation that differs significantly from other observations in the sample. Outliers can significant, significantly distort the statistical patterns. And uh, statistical methods for recognizing outliers divides uh, into two groups, non-parametric methods and parametric methods. Non-parametric methods also are uh, based on cluster analysis. Uh, for them, we install package uh, fast cluster and fun function H cluster. Uh, here you see the commands and they allow uh, to create uh, the dendrogram and uh, visualize uh, three clusters and outlier uh, for the following estimation uh, it uh, by criteria. Parametric methods. Uh, our system uh, offers uh, uh, some of them. Uh, we will show Dixon and Grubbs criteria. Uh, they test the new hypothesis. Uh, there are no outliers in the data series Relative to the alternative hypothesis, there is at least one statistical outlier in the data series. We use package outliers and library outliers. Dixon's Q tests for variable. Also, we use uh, our target variable, the duration of work and week at the main job in hours. Uh, in the left table, there are uh, formulas which uh, represent uh, the idea of Dixon's Q tests. Uh, we compare the ranked values and then estimate uh, the R Dixon Q test 
uh, in comparison with uh, uh, its table value. Uh, and uh, you see in the right uh, table, you can see the result. Uh, the result uh, of estimation is that in the column of this uh, target value, the highest value, 70 hours, is an outlier, and the lowest value, zero, also is an outlier, according to the Dixon Q test. Graphs test. Uh, are based, is based on the normal law of distribution. And uh, we can uh, uh, see three formulas uh, for the largest value and estimation of, of it as outlier for the smallest value and two-sided two test. Uh, the command for using of graphs test and the result also are presented and uh, for uh, two-sided test. And uh, the result is that zero and 80 hours are outliers according to the Grubbs test. Uh, the conclusion of this introduction part is that the examples demonstrate the use of R commons uh, for preprocessing uh, to identify the patterns in statistical arrays based on non based on initial hypothesis. Examples prove the possibility uh, of using R packages for preliminary processing of official statistics data. And uh, in reality, in our uh, cooperation with uh, ROSTAT, we implement these uh, packages, these algorithms in their practical work. Statistical matching. Statistical matching is very important preliminary stage of data science methodology in official statistics. It's a, it allows us to integrate the micro data of sample statistical surveys and to increase the efficiency of official statistics. Theoretical basis. There are some main, very significant publications. Uh, the theoretical basis uh, of this method is presented in uh, the book Statistical Matching Methodological Issues and Practice with R Stat Match uh, by Marcella D. Arisio. And some articles and uh, some uh, works, and uh, especially uh, the uh, publishing work of Susan Rassler, also uh, the author of this methodology, the founder of this methodology. Uh, the application of statistical matching. Uh, in uh, theoretical uh, 
part and uh, some practical recommendations are presented in uh, this guideline, uh, statistical matching uh, model-based approach for data integration uh, of Eurostat. And uh, we use uh, this recommendation for its implementation to the Russian official statistics. Also Eurostat uh, has presented uh, the results of some practical uh, works. Uh, for example, statistical matching of microdata of household hold budget survey and, uh, how, and household uh, income and expenditure survey uh, for um, aggregation them. And as a result, uh, they get uh, the synthetic data set indicators of income, material deprivation, expenditures to assess uh, the standard of living of the population uh, on the basis of stat match methodology. Uh, here, uh, there is a main idea of statistical matching uh, techniques and methodology, but we will continue uh, this uh, point after the short five minute break. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, thank you, Dr. Fadova. So to have a break, you can have a CR break or water break, or if you wanted to join us in our game, please go to menti.com and just wait for a minute for the uh, code. So for our code, uh, for our code, we have two two seven one eight two. So for those who wanted to join our game, please go to menti.com and enter the following code. And then as you enter the code, you'll be asked to write a name or an alias so that we can have far. Uh, this game uh, is called the emoji game. So given some emojis, you're going to guess the word, the title of the song, or the, 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 the title of the book. So waiting for other participants. Now we have four. Miss, could, uh, don't could worry, you... the emojis are not, are the questions. Yes, the code. The code is two two seven one eight two. Go to menti.com and then the code is two two seven one eight two. Oh, we have more participants now. We have eight, nine, ten. Okay, let's keep the participants coming so that it would be more fun. The more the merrier, the merrier, right? Okay, let's wait. Can all the participants see the screen? The code for the menti.com is, uh, is also posted in the chat. 
For those who have trouble seeing the screen, go to menti.com and then use the code 22718. Let's continue. Uh, okay, so we have already 27 participants, 28. Let's wait until it reaches 30 participants and we're going to start the game. Okay, Okay, so let's uh, go to 28, 29. Okay, let's uh, not wait for 30 participants. We can now start the game. Okay, for the first question, please write your seatbelts. Please answer fast to get more points. You have only 30 seconds to guess the word. Please be reminded that use lowercase in writing your answer. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So let's see who got the correct answers, and the correct answer is popcorn. Oh, I see that there are others who used pop space corn. Uh, Mandy is sensitive, face sensitive, and then the, answers, the answer that I wrote is popcorn with no space. So I've got a notice here that uh, we need to proceed with the discussion. So. Unfortunately, this is just a trial version of the game. You'll have to play, uh, you'll get a chance to play the full game in our next icebreaker. Okay, thank you. Can we continue? Yes, no, we can. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The main idea of statistical matching is the integration of two or more data sets, usually the sample survey data from the same population. You can see the presentation of it. We have two data sets. The first of them is uh, the result of sample so survey donor file. And the second one, the results of sample survey B, recipient file. The sample A survey uh, consists the micro data which are characterized uh, the variables X and Y. Every unit is characterized by X and Y variables. Sample B consists units which are characterized uh, the variables also X and Z. And the purpose is to get a synthetic data set, uh, every unit of which will be characterized by the variables X, Y, and Z. So uh, we will uh, discuss the methodology of this approach of this method. Uh, but um, the first point is that the basic condition 
for the step match method is conditional independence of variables. And you can see the formula of this condition. What is necessary to use the start match methodology in uh, Russian practical official statistics? On the examples of two surveys, we can show it. Red blocks, it, uh, they present the number of units uh, of household uh, income survey. Every year, this sample survey includes uh, six, 60 thousand households as uh, uh, which are observed in this survey, 60,000 uh, households. Uh, this is the household income survey, red blocks. Uh, every uh, one uh, in five years, uh, this survey includes uh, 160,000 households, but among uh, but between these years, uh, 60,000 respondents. A household income survey uh, includes uh, every year. Labor force survey. Labor force survey has much bigger uh, uh, amount of of uh, respondents. Every year, approximately. 360,000 units uh, are included in the labor force survey. And, uh, uh, the, and we need to integrate these surveys because labor force surveys uh, estimates uh, the employment situation, uh, situation with unemployment, uh, the conditionals of work, uh, working time, uh, the place of work or activity, but it doesn't consist uh, the information about payment, about uh, employment and income or uh, any uh, support, uh, money support from the government. Uh, household uh, income survey consists much less uh, units of residents, but it consists of the information about uh, income from employment, about other forms of income from property, uh, from uh, another kinds of activity, and but it's uh, it is much less reliable. So the purpose is to integrate uh, these two surveys. Uh, they are microdata. Uh, for the getting the new uh, reliable statistical information, which consists uh, the reliable information of uh, employment and uh, uh, the different activities of, uh, of uh, households uh, and their members, and also the information of, about uh, concerning their income, uh, income from employment and income from other uh, kinds of activity. The idea uh, is uh, presented on this slide. Uh, household, in this case, household income survey uh, provides uh, a donor array uh, and it consists of common variables, X and specific variables, uh, Y. And uh, uh, as well as labor force survey, uh, in this case, it is a recipient, a recipient array. Uh, it consists of uh, common variables X and specific variables Z. And the idea is to get the synthetic microdata set, uh, which uh, aggregate uh, the microdata of two surveys household income survey and labor force survey. And every unit of this uh, aggregate um, uh, microdata set uh, will be characterized uh, by the X variables, uh, Y variables, and Z variables. Uh, 
before uh, the use of um, our commons, we should uh, make uh, some uh, points for harmonization. Harmonization uh, of definition of units, harmonization of reference periods, uh, completion of population, harmonization of variables, of classifications, uh, the uh, methodology of dealing with missing data, and uh, the methodology of der derivation of variables. And uh, this is a necessary, point, uh, necessary uh, points for uh, the pre preliminary uh, stage of stat match um, methodology, stat match algorithm, and they are described in uh, the published book, Statistical Match Theory and Practice by Marcella Reggio and uh, his co authors. Uh, the first stage, the harmonization of variables. Uh, you can see uh, the codes and uh, the explanation of uh, variables of household income survey and labor force survey of uh, Russian official statistical service. And you can see that they are uh, different. Uh, the codes, uh, the explanation of variables are different. And we can uh, and we should compare the uh, metadata uh, as a basis for uh, harmonization of variables. And here uh, we present the result of the harmonization of the variables. Now they have uh, the common uh, name, uh, explanation, and uh, the common uh, abbreviation. Uh, we, uh, in the following uh, discussion, we will use uh, such variables as gender, age, marriage status, education level, main place of employment, and main place of work. And you can see names of harmonized variables for integrating data sets, a household income survey and labor force survey. Uh, this is uh, the explanation of uh, uh, target variables. Uh, we, uh, as a target variables, we uh, will use average total income per household member per capita, uh, disposable gross income uh, per capita, uh, average monetary uh, income, uh, income from employment, average uh, hourly wages, uh, and, uh, and benefits, compensation, and other social payments per capita. And uh, the names of target variables in our files. Shortly, we can uh, present uh, the statistical matching, uh, matching algorithms, uh, which include uh, some points. The first of them is to define the micro data sets uh, to integration. Uh, should define a donor and recipient uh, data sets. Uh, we mark donors is by the letter A and the recipient data set by the letter B. Uh, we should define the target variable uh, of array A uh, for implementation to array B. Uh, second step, um, to identify uh, common variables, X, and imagine variables among them. Um, uh, what are the matching variables? Matching variables within the common variables, they are the variables which are most closely related to the target variable Y. Uh, we should harmonize common variables by content, names, codes, etc. And we should estimate the similarity of statistical distribution of common variables in the arrays A and B. And uh, for this uh, 
stage for this point, we should ca uh, calibrate distributions of common variables and get the common distribution. Point three, to choose statistical matching method. It could be a parametric or non-parametric or mixed method. And last point, to carry out statistical matching procedures, obtain a synthetic set of microdata, calculate the generalizing characteristics of the target variable y, taking into account, uh, uh, taking into account the harmonized weights of the recipient, recipient array. Estimation of the salinity uh, of distributions of common variables. Uh, for this um, example, uh, the aggregation of household income survey and labor force survey, uh, the common variables X are the variables uh, which characterize the demographic status or uh, the status uh, in as a household member of every unit. And uh, they, uh, could be uh, categorical or numerical variables. Uh, so we use uh, the methodology uh, for estimation of similarity of distributions, which allows us to estimate the similarity of distributions for categorical and numerical uh, formats or, uh, of variables. Uh, in uh, uh, publications uh, and uh, uh, of Eurostat, some other publications and recommendations to our packages. Uh, there are, uh, the, the, there is presented uh, the Hellinger distance metric as a measure uh, for estimation of similarity of distributions of two arrays. You can see the formula of Hellinger distance metric and uh, the example of application of it uh, for, the, uh, for the short example, which consists uh, for variables and two surveys, D and R, and distribution of units by uh, the available of these variables and the result of estimation. The result is uh, that the Hellinger distance matrix uh, 0 0.19 is higher than uh, criteria uh, 0 0.05, so the distributions uh, D and R differ significantly. We make a conclusion that they differ significantly. The estimation of the similarity uh, of common distribution uh, for categorical variables. Also our package uh, consists in uh, some metrics, Kramer's V coefficient, goodman kraskal lambda coefficient, goodman kraskal uh, RC coefficient, uncertainty coefficient uh, for estimation the similarity of distribution of uh, common categorical variables. We load data from Excel, use read Excel uh, and DPLIR, uh, DPLIR packages and install uh, two libraries, read Excel and DPLYR library. Also abbreviation, um, the object of micro data set uh, of household income survey, uh, the abbreviation we use ODN according to the Russian abbreviation and labor force survey we use uh, or our S abbreviation, also according to the Ash uh, Russian abbreviation of labor force survey. We see two objects, ODN, uh, labor force survey, which includes uh, 4,980 units and, excuse me, please. And or RS object, uh, this is labor force survey, which includes 27,244 units. 
This is commons for loading data from SPSS into our environment. So uh, we uh, present the loading from Excel file and from SPSS file. StatMatch package. We will install and library StatMatch. Uh, this stage is identification of common variables. We use functional function intersect, which shows us the common variables for both arrays, household income survey and labor force survey. We see the common variables, sex, age, by five groups, educational level, marital status, uh, the name of region of location, the respondent, uh, the name of region of real work of respondent, uh, the main place of work, the duration of working week in hours, and some other variables. And the last one, WW, as is wage coefficient for spread the result of sample survey on the general population. Set diff function is used to highlight the specific variables. The specific variable is the duration uh, uh, of, uh, sorry, the specific variable is uh, the wages per hour, the wages per month, and uh, annual wage amount. The target imputed variable will be the wages per hour. Next point. We should estimate the correlation between the imputed, imputed variable wage hour and the common variables of the donor array household income survey ODN based on Spearman rank correlation coefficient. We use uh, function Spearman 2 and uh, we get the result, the estimation of Spearman rank correlation coefficients for all common variables. Uh, the link, uh, it estimates the link between uh, the target variable, which are and common variables uh, by the array uh, of household income survey donor data set. This is the plot of Spearman's rank correlation coefficient and we can see uh, the strong uh, link uh, of some factor or so of some common variables with the target variable. They are uh, variables educational level, gender, uh, age, and uh, location uh, of household, region of household location, home rank. Function hist also we use for comparison of uh, histograms of distribution, uh, the wage coefficients for both arrays, household, uh, sorry, um, household income survey and labor force survey. Uh, we see the difference between the distribution of wage coefficients of these surveys. Next function, harmonize. It allows us to harmonize the joint distribution of variables observed independently in two sample surveys. The harmonized distribution of common variables. Uh, the methodology is published in uh, work use uh, of statistical matching techniques in calibration estimation by Ransom. Uh, 
And uh, this uh, publication consists uh, the explanation, uh, the measure of uh, distance uh, between the value of original weights and the calibrated weights, uh, the um, requirement of minimizing this measure as a basis for harmonization uh, of the joint distribution, and uh, the horowitz thomson constraint, uh, which must be also satisfied. You can see the for formula of horowitz thomson constraint. The result of application of function harmonize is the Ravain result, uh, Ravain, uh, the units of labor force survey and household income survey. And we see uh, the comments for comparison of uh, the initial distribution, uh, red and uh, uh, the distribution as, as a result of calibration, uh, blue, uh, the comparison of histograms, and we see the significant, significant uh, exchange of uh, distributions in both cases for labor force survey and for household income survey arrays. As a result, we get uh, the household income microdata array, ODN, with initial WW and harmonized WWHZ weights. The last column we will use for the procedures of statistical matching. Also, fragment of labor force microdata array, or RS with initial WW and harmonized WWHZ weights. Also the last one marked with red star will be used for stat match technology. For integration of two microdata sets, uh, we can use parametric methods, non-parametric methods, and mixed methods. Non-parametric statistical matching methods are most widely used. They are not based on assumption about correspondence of distribution uh, between donors and recipient arrays. Non-parametric met methods also uh, we can name them as nearest neighbor family methods. Uh, three main functions, NND hot deck, rent W NND hot deck, and rank NND dot hot deck. The first one uh, uses the nearest neighbor technology for each unit of the recipient array in the donor array. Uh, we find out the nearest neighbor unit of the recipient array. Then uh, the second function, rent W and MD. For each unit of the recipient array, we determine the subset, the subset of nearest donors. And then the donor unit is selected at random. Rank and ND, the nearest donor is selected, taking into account the distance to the nearest point of the empirical cumulate distribution function. How to estimate the distance between units? Our system uh, offers some functions or arguments uh, for different uh, metrics, Euclidean metric, Manhattan distance, Macalanobis distance, a go and Gover distance. You can see arguments of functions in some cases and formulas.
and possible combination of the methods of statistical matching, of integration of both uh, arrays of microdata and the metrics of, for measurement of distance between units. Uh, here we see the possible combinations of two of these uh, sets and uh, uh, matching variables, which we, find, which we estimated with the Spearman correlation, correlation coefficients, they are sex, age five, uh, educational level, and uh, name truth. With, uh, it means the place of work and target variable, uh, wage per hour, disposable income, monetary income, total income per one unit of household member. Comments for calculation of the average, average value of the target variable from the aggregated data set. Uh, and we use these comments and get the results. We can compare to plots. Letter A is a relative uh, values of target variables uh, according to the household income survey, initial microdata set, which includes uh, 60,000 respondents every year. And letter B, uh, the relative uh, values of target variables according to the integrated data set of the household income survey and labor force survey, which includes uh, 390,000 respondents. We see the significant difference of, uh, as a result, and we uh, can estimate uh, the result with letter B as most reliable and allows us to get new information by the integration of microdata of two sample surveys, household income survey and labor force survey. Statistical comparison methods, the statistical matching methods are applic applicable in practical statistical activities. And we uh, presented it uh, by the real results of sample uh, surveys of household income survey and labor force survey. And now uh, we uh, cooperate with the Russian Federal Statistics Service uh, on the implementation of statistical matching methodology for increasing the efficiency of uh, sample surveys and increasing uh, their real reliability and efficiency uh, of statistical sample surveys and decreasing of their costs. New topic. Applying random forest methods for practical statistics. Author of this topic is based on the real practice of Russian Federal Statistics Service uh, of application on experimental basis, the random forest methods to practical statistics. The random forest methods allows to solve problems classification and regression, two main problems. And some additional problems 
ident identification of the most informative variables, clustering, identification of outliers, filling and missing data. Decision tree is the basic theoretical concept and structural unit of the random forest method. Theoretical basis, Leo Bremen, Leo Bremen and his colleague, Cutler, Stevens, are the founders of these methods. Random forest is an ensemble of decision trees. Each decision tree is constructed from, the, from a sample using a bootstrap techniques or return sample. Decision tree is formed on the training sample. The quality assessment of, data, of decision tree is carried out on the test or control sample. And you can see the picture decision uh, random forest as an ensemble of decision trees. Also, we will load a fragment of microdata array uh, of a sample of uh, household budget survey. Uh, household budget survey is conducted by uh, Russian Federal Statistics Service every two years, and it consists 4,500 units. Here there is a fragment of this data included 1,000 units. The abbreviation OBDH, according to the Russian abbreviation. We have some variables. The numbers of household members, every disposable income per one household member, number of persons in the household, number of children under 16, uh, consumer expenses of a household member, and personal saving for a quarter in rubles. Uh, so, the commons head and tail allows us to see first and last six rows of this uh, data set. Comments for dividing a data set into two sets, training set and test set. Uh, training uh, set includes 70% uh, of uh, whole data set, test set uh, 30%. You can see uh, three objects. Initial object OBDH1, 1,000 units. Test object, 3,000 units. And train uh, object, 700 units. Comments for regression with random forest methods. Uh, random forest function. And uh, there are some arguments, importance, proximity, and we can use argument MTRY, which uh, determines the number of variables chosen at random when constructing each decision tree. Number of variables for constructing decision each decision tree. If uh, this argument is false, uh, the calculation uh, makes automatically, uh, and you can see for classification and for regression, uh, the estimation of number of variables uh, for classification and regression. Dependent variable, uh, the abbreviation RAS-RES RAS, RAS, 
it means average disposable income per one household member per quarter in rubles. With the use of uh, the common plot, we can visualize uh, the plot of arrow of, of building uh, the decision trees. Uh, we see uh, that the minimum, the minimum of this arrow um, on the number of uh, decision trees in ensemble, approximately uh, 45 to 8 decision trees in ensemble. Here, comments for evaluation, evaluation of predicted values of the dependent variables, variable, target variable, RAS, RAS, uh, as a result of uh, regression by random forest technology. We see comments and the result, uh, initial values of target variable and uh, predicted uh, values of target variable. We compare the histograms of them and we see the significant difference. Uh, the function importance uh, shows uh, the importance uh, of um, every factor variable uh, for decreasing uh, of uh, mean square error or purity. And uh, we see uh, the difference between the factor variables uh, for influence of the uh, accuracy of a random forest partition. The comments for ranking trees by number of nodes. Uh, we see the result uh, that uh, from 11 nodes to 281 nodes uh, from uh, the first tree and the last uh, tree with number 500. Lots of regression trees. Uh, we should install uh, the source system functions additionally to, with the package of stuff match and uh, allows us uh, to visualize regression tree number one it consists 11 nodes, number 50, for example, 41 nodes, number 100, 61 nodes, number 200, 89 nodes, and the last regression tree, 500, uh, it consists 281 nodes. Two functions uh, we see uh, for estimation, the partial dependence of target variables on predictors. Uh, the first predictor is the number of children under uh, 16 in household. And the second one, those personal saving for quarter in rubles. Uh, we see uh, the correlation according to the values of these uh, predictors, the correlation with the target variable. Classification with random forest method. Uh, on the left uh, side, we see the initial classification, uh, the units by the value of target variable, uh, they were divided into three groups and they are presented on a histogram with histogram. And uh, also uh, we, uh, we load uh, the file, the initial file, data set of uh, microdata of uh, household budget survey. A uh, fragment of it, which includes 1,000 uh, 1, units 
but now it is OBDH2 uh, and every unit is characterized but 15 variables. Uh, they are demographic uh, characteristics, characteristics of employment, characteristics of income, of expenditure, and some other characteristics. Comments uh, for creation, uh, the plot of estimation of errors uh, for different ensembles of trees. Uh, we see uh, uh, we see uh, the lines for ensemble of trees and uh, for all units and for every cluster. Uh, we use three clusters, three groups, and so for every cluster. And here are uh, the results for, uh, if we use argument MTRI uh, with uh, volume equals 4, 12, and we see that uh, the results depends on uh, the number of variables which we uh, use uh, for uh, randomly for creation the uh, trees. Get tree, get tree. Um, uh, this package uh, doesn't allow us uh, to create the plot of classification tree, but we can get the information about the structure of uh, classification tree with function get tree. We see uh, the left and right daughter for every node, and uh, we can uh, uh, imagine the structure of uh, this tree. The comparison, the comparison uh, initial results of classification and um, uh, the results of classification units uh, by the uh, random forest methodology. Uh, the columns marked by red uh, represent uh, the classifications, the, the groups which uh, were not satisfied by the classification with uh, random forest methodology. Uh, so uh, this is um, incorrect uh, initial classification. Also, uh, the meaning of uh, the variables uh, according to their uh, input uh, to the accuracy of, a, of a classification, uh, we see the ranking of uh, the factor variables according to their influence uh, on uh, the accuracy of classification. This is uh, the conclusion. Using random forest methods, methods in practical statistics allows reveal the hidden structure in data arrays. It is very important because it gives uh, the practical statistics the new information about the structure of the population uh, which uh, was estimated. And uh, this uh, complex of methods allows uh, to optimize the number and composition of observed variables. So reduced the cost of conducting survives. Thank you for this part. Okay, thank you, Dr. Rova. Now, while checking whether we have questions or not in the Slido, let's have again an icebreaker. I'm sure you wanted to finish what we have started earlier. So let's continue the game that we had. But before that, may I request uh, Dr. Zarova to unshare the screen? Okay, I think it's already unshared. Okay, let's go again to menti.com and then let's use the same code that we had earlier. We had the code 227182.
Let's wait for the Mandy that come to load. Apologies for the technical issue. So while waiting for the screen of the menti.com, uh, again, please go to menti.com and then uh, use the code use the code 641, i sorry, 182. Oh, unfortunately, we have technical issues for the one in charge with the menti.com. So uh, maybe if he'll be back, we'll continue with the game. So for now, let's have a break. So you can go to the, to, your, to the comfort room or you can drink water. Oh, sorry, here's already the game. <laughs> So for those participants who haven't entered the game earlier, please go to menti.com and then use the code 227182. And then for those who have entered already, you can just go back to the screen where you left earlier uh, in your laptop, in your phone, or in your uh, screen. So now let's start with number two. We have here, guess the song by the emoji. So you have 30 seconds to answer. Again, please use lower cost uh, lowercase rather in writing your answer and use appropriate space and appropriate uh, punctuation marks. We have 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So time's up. So we have the answers here. And the correct answer is the song is entitled, I'm an Englishman in New York. <laughs> Unfortunately, no one got the correct answer. Uh, one said, it's hard. Uh, I'm very sorry. This game is just for fun. Okay, let's proceed with the last question or the last uh, question for this quiz. Ready? Fasten your seatbelts, and then we have guess the song by the emoji. Again, use lowercase in writing your answers. You have 30 seconds to write the correct answer. Use proper punctuation marks and then proper spacing of the title of the song. Okay, three, two, one, stop. And the correct answer is knocking on heaven's door. It's not knocking, it's knocking on heaven's door. Okay. <laughs> and then the knock knock on heaven's door, that is part of the lyrics. It's not actually the title. So let's see who won or who has the highest score. Ta-da! Okay. Oh, we have Mon for first place, Liz for second place, Reg for third place. Okay, let's virtually clap hands for Mon. Congratulations, Mon. 
Okay, so that's for our game today. Now let's have, uh, let's watch some AVP before we proceed with the question and answer if ever there is any. If you have immediate clarifications and questions, please go to slido.com and then using use the code 64133. So some of the questions, uh, uh, some of the participants asked if we're going to provide a copy of the presentation of our speaker, yes. Recording of the Zoom meeting as well as copy of the presentation will be emailed to you uh, as soon as the organizer can after this event. I think we're having some difficulties there. So for the participants, since it's a break, you can have water, you can have, you can go to comfort room. Oh, here's the screen already. So while you're drinking some cup of coffee or water, please watch the AVP. We are the International Statistical Institute, ISI a diverse and vibrant organization with a long history and a rich tradition. Our mission is to promote the understanding, development and good practice of statistics worldwide. This is reflected in our slogan, Statistical Science for a Better World. The Institute was founded in London in 1885 by 81 prominent statisticians from governments and academia. At present, the ISI family include members from over a hundred countries and seven international associations specializing in different areas of statistical science. Worldwide, we are linked with national statistical offices and societies, central banks, international statistical agencies, and we have consultative status at the United Nations. We provide a welcoming environment for advancing statistical knowledge and learning best practices, for sharing state-of-the-art developments, and for creating opportunities to network. Our flagship event is the biennial ISI's World Statistics Congress, where several thousand statisticians from around the globe meet to exchange and explore new ideas and to network. The World Statistics Congresses are organized by different countries and the hosts invest tremendous effort into making sure the conference is a memorable occasion for participants. Our Declaration of Professional Ethics provides a framework for statistical professionals to make individual decisions based on common values and experiences. We have prestigious awards to recognize the achievements and accomplishments of statisticians. We support members from developing countries to attend our many international conferences. We also develop and deliver other statistical capacity building programs, regional workshops, mentoring programs and activities to promote the careers of women and young statisticians. Become part of the ISI family. Feel connected to the worldwide community of statisticians 
and help build a better world through statistical science. Join us at isi-web.org. YSSE is the Young Statisticians Group in ISSE, which was established in 2010. of Statistics, the most significant institute in the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, is a nationally recognized academic institution. Its humble beginnings started way back 1952 when a statistical laboratory under the then College of Agriculture was established. It was considered as among the first organized institutions of statistics in the country. For several decades, the unit has transformed itself from a small service unit until 1998 when it was formally established as an independent institution. Currently, the institute is one of the only two institutions in the country awarded a Center of Excellence in Statistics with the Philippines Commission on Higher Education. INSTAT has more than 30 faculty members and approximately 200 students. It houses a 100-seat lecture hall four classrooms and three computer laboratories complete with LAN, internet connection, smart LED TV monitor, LCD projectors, and open source and licensed statistical packages. It also has a separate reading room where course materials, textbooks, statistical reports of government agencies, unpublished special problems and theses, and journals are available for student use. To keep up with the demands of the country and in response to the K-12 program, the Institute in 2017 revised its Bachelor of Science in Statistics curriculum. While the new curriculum is still designed to provide a solid foundation in statistics, anchored in the balance of skills in statistical theory and methods, it now has opportunities for specialization with the addition of elective track courses. This is done to make a BS Statistics graduate flexible through exposure to the basic sciences to build a career in business, industry, academia or government or pursue graduate studies in statistics and its allied fields. With its up-to-date curriculum, facility and statistical softwares, the institute produces competitive statisticians that have already been recognized in different fields. Its alumni continue to be prime movers in the academe, government, and the industry. Notable alumni include Mahala Nobis Awardee, Dr. Isidore David, UPLB College of Arts and Sciences Dean Felino Lansigan, 
and Philippine Science High School System Executive Director Lilia Habacon. INSTA takes part in activities such as the SAS Academic Analytics Conference, spearheaded by SAS Institute of Philippines Incorporated, for which UPLB teams of BS Statistics students have garnered the Best Paper Award for two consecutive conferences in 2014 and 2017. In addition, the INSTA, together with the UP School of Statistics, jointly hosts a National Student Faculty Conference on the Statistical Sciences, an annual event to present scientific papers on statistical research and provide a venue for knowledge sharing and exchange and meeting leaders in the Philippine statistical system. Another yearly event is the Institute's anniversary celebration, which showcases a series of seminars and student-faculty activities such as Instat Family Feud, Pasig Labach, Mr. and Ms. Tats, and Instat Sports Fest. We welcome you to the Institute of Statistics where you will surely experience the greatest academic life, highest student achievements, and most rewarding social endeavors. Okay, so after reviewing some questions in Slido, we have some uh, number one is to our uh, key speaker, Dr. Elena Zavora, made a reference to a publication on missing values. May we have the title and author? Dr. Zavora? So again, the question is, are, may, uh, Dr. Zavara made a reference to a publication on missing values. May we have the title and author? What, one moment. So, uh, Professor Zara joins us. Видно презентацию? Нет, нет, я говорю, мою презентацию сейчас видно? Ссылка на это. Мне вот надо, чтобы этот слайд был видно. Thank you very much for your question. Uh, this is the publication which consists the types of missing data, missing values, and uh, the main approach to dealing with missing data. Mighty, me or midi, uh, amazing journey. It's really amazing journey. Amazing journey to robust statistics. After the excluding of missing daily value or replacing them, we should have the same distribution as initial distribu distribution was. So robust statistics we should estimate. Amazing journey to robust statistics, discovering outliers for efficient prediction. It's the name of very interesting and important publication concerning the dealing with missing data. Uh, 
because uh, we also we had we have the question about uh, please help me with the question. Uh -huh. Very interesting uh, question. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for it. What skills should have specialists if you want to work as data science specialist in official statistics or in business organization, and uh, which uh, works with the big massive of data? I think it um, can't be one specialist which has uh, the all necess necessary skills for work as uh, for work with uh, all these methods. Of course, it should be a group of specialists, specialists command. But the but data science specialist firstly should be the specialist in mathematical statistics. Also, he sh uh, should have developed skills of communication, of involving new information, of work with publications, but firstly, mathematical statistics. He should work in one group, in one command with, uh, uh, with IT specialists, uh, I have a good experience of work with IT specialists uh, more than 20 years, and we should understand each other very good and very well, and uh, understand the ideas of each other. But uh, the first very important skill is a skill as mathematical statistics. With uh, these um, points are very important to be a specialist in practical sphere. And uh, the best way is internship in uh, the organization, internship in uh, uh, national statistical office or in business structure. Uh, the knowledge of practical field is also very important for data uh, science specialist. So three points, uh, mathematical statistics, IT knowledge and uh, work in group with IT specialists and uh, knowledge of uh, practical field, or practical sphere uh, for the development as IT specialists and, uh, and successful career in this sphere. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, also, also, we had, also we had a question about uh, the presentation. Is it possible to get the presentation? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Uh, yesterday, oh, sorry, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, of course, tomorrow, uh, we will send uh, the presentation uh, to organizer uh, Mar uh, Mara uh, Sherlin uh, Tolento. We will uh, send uh, her our presentation and you can use it, uh, the comments from it and um, our packages uh, and uh, libraries. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, any more questions, but it's better to send them by internet and on the internet and we will answer after our seminar. Uh, we will uh, have one more presentation and uh, then we can finish. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Thank you. We will have a break until, so, until, until one more break. Thank you for answering the questions, um, Ms. Sabarova. Uh, yeah, I think we've already learned a lot today. So let's have a short break right now. Thank you for all the talks. Um, we would say we would make a break for 13 minutes or 35 even. So let's meet again in 35 minutes. In Austria, it's 11 then. I think in Moscow, it's 1 p.m. Am I right? 
Um, yeah, it's 1 p.m. So thank you all for your participation so far, and we will continue in 35 minutes. Thank you.
Okay, welcome back participants. Are you now full? Have you eaten your lunch or your dinner? So I hope that you had a relaxing break and are ready for the second part of the discussion. Now I we may now give the floor again to Dr. To our guest, uh, to our key speaker. Okay, welcome back, Dr. Zaroba. One moment. Hello, uh, we are ready to continue. And the last topic uh, is analysis of microdata of sample surveys using big cluster analysis. Using big cluster analysis in practical statistics. First of all, theoretical basis. I present some publications, which consist the basis, the theoretical basis of big cluster analysis. It is a new methodology, relatively new, but it is new for the practical statistics. And we will show using of big cluster analysis in practical statistics of Russian Federal Statistics Service. Why is method of big cluster analysis uh, necessary in uh, uh, practical statistics? There are some reasons. First of them, it allows us to cluster in units by some variables uh, according to blocks of variables, which are more informative for clustering, but not one block of variables, are at least two blocks of variables. One of them can be categorical uh, and another one can be numerical. So clustering by two blocks of dimensions, uh, I mean multidimensional blocks, clustering by two multidimensional blocks. The second reason, large data sets. If we have large data sets, clusters can have fusive boundaries. And it is difficult to get Accurate, uh, accurate cluster complexes uh, because uh, we have large data sets and not exact uh, deviation between them. And uh, only some of variables usually are cluster forming. In this case, also we prefer to use big cluster technologies. The purpose of big cluster analysis is to find subgroups of rows and cones that are most similar to each other and are most different from the rest. On the right side, you can see the result of big cluster analysis. We, we've got the subgroup which has the similar units which are most different from the rest groups of units. We use package B class and function B class. It consists six clustering methods. They are presented here.
The names of these methods uh, usually uh, reflect uh, the main idea of B clustering. Only the last one uh, rep uh, shows uh, the object of B clustering. This is method X motifs. The author, uh, the authors are presented. Um, they uh, pu published uh, the article, and it is presented on screen. Uh, and the object was uh, the massive data of uh, genus and uh, their influence uh, on uh, organ organism, uh, on the characteristics of physical and uh, psychological behavior. So genus and motifs, they are uh, the results of genus combination. So uh, the name of this method is X motives. Next method, CC. The name uh, by the authors are uh, Cheng and Church. Uh, article uh, 2000 uh, year and main formulas. And we see that the main idea of this method is uh, to minimize uh, the matrix of, of distance between uh, multidimensional uh, units. Uh, with, uh, minim minimization uh, simula simultaneously uh, by all characteristics of these units. Four months uh, for the cluster analysis uh, for X motifs method. They are presented here and they allows us to get some clusters. Now we see four clusters, which includes the same or very close uh, located characteristics of rows so units and we're very close located uh, variables. The simultaneous cluster, uh, cluster uh, deviation uh, by units and by variables which are characterized them. Also the results are presented in this uh, picture. You see the, uh, the clustering of variables and clustering of units. Method Bmax. One second, please. Uh, this method gives us two clusters. Uh, and we see that the first cluster <coughs> consists uh, 28 more informative, uh, more closely related units and uh, nine uh, close related columns or variables. Uh, the second cluster uh, consists uh, 22 units and uh, combines uh, 10 variables. We see the results of comparison the, uh, to uh, methods. Uh, they give 
uh, they give uh, close results for clusters uh, one by motif method and uh, cluster one by the cluster method. Uh, and we see the close location uh, three clusters of the cluster method. We can uh, estimate the similarity of results of the cluster analysis by Dracar index, function Dracar uh, Also, we see that it is uh, 0 0.16. It's far from one and uh, point zero and uh, the results are not close correlated. Uh, nevertheless, nevertheless, uh, the using of the cluster methods is effective of, for uh, practical statistics uh, because here on the basis of labor force survey, uh, we show the results of uh, the cluster analysis with the BCLAST methods, uh, which gives uh, the good uh, characteristics by uh, criteria of estimation of error of classification. And it shows uh, that uh, variables which characterize every unit of sample so survey could be combined. Uh, some of them are close related to others, but some of them are not informative for, uh, the, might, uh, for the formation of multidimensional uh, sphere. So uh, for the conducting of uh, labor force surveys, it, if it, is, uh, it is possible to use, to include into survey only uh, the variables which are combined in one cluster. Here we see, here we see two big clusters and other uh, variables which are not combined in these two clusters are much less uh, significant, are much less informative. Uh, we see that uh, the first cluster combines uh, such variables as uh, duration of work and week in hours, uh, the duration of normal uh, work and week, additional work and week, and um, the second one combine uh, the related variables, the level of education and marriage status. Uh, so th these uh, groups of variables gives the most part of information for multidimensional uh, distribution of uh, survived uh, units. Uh, this result is uh, important for practical statistics because now the questionnaire uh, of labor force survey is very big. It consists um, more than 100 questions uh, for every respondent and we can combine them uh, into clusters and uh, estimate the correlation links between uh, the variables of each cluster and choose one uh, more informative uh, variables for each cluster. So decrease the questionnaire, the points of questionnaire, decrease the costs uh, for conducting uh, the sample survey. Uh, these uh, results, uh, this uh, new approach uh, is, uh, uh, was, uh, was accepted in Russian Federal Statistical Service. And now uh, we are cooperate with, uh, cooperating with them in uh, the, uh, for objects of developing and minimize, uh, minimizing the costs for conducting the labor force survey and uh, some other sample surveys. It was the last uh, presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for uh, organizers uh, the, uh, 
uh, president of the International Statistical Institute, John Byler, for director, uh, Ada Van Krimpen, and of course, for organizer of our workshop, um, Mara uh, Sherlin Talenta. Many thanks for uh, you uh, for the organization of our workshop. And uh, now we are preparing the present all presentations and um, we combine them in one presentation and uh, we will send uh, to, uh, today, today uh, the whole presentation with uh, uh, email address. And I can uh, and I will be able to answer uh, to your questions uh, if you send them me or, or, and organ our organizers. And uh, also, uh, we, we, we can um, think about the cooperation in different spheres. But now I would like uh, to comment uh, the practical uh, tasks which we offer for training uh, the new methodology. And uh, in uh, two or three minutes, we will be ready to uh, comment our tasks for the participants of our workshop. Oh, I young statistician. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> uh, tasks for workshop. Um, I think it's, it will be difficult to, to uh, solve these problems uh, for tomorrow, but um, we can continue our cooperation with your universities or yourself and uh, but um, I suggest that we can uh, offer following tasks. Ine? The first one, using the random forest methodology, classify the members of Asian Pacific Economic Cooperation, uh, according to the indicator GDP per capita, use any indicators from list one with explanation as factor variables. Compare the average characteristics of country groups, including Philippines, including Philippines and the Russian Federation. Uh, here you see the key indicators, uh, the uh, internet page with uh, key indicators database. And also oh, we will send these files, the files with information for the solving of this problem. So, uh, to classify countries, the target variable GDP per capita, and the, uh, using uh, some characteristics of these countries, and compare the country groups, two groups, one of them, or maybe it will be one group. I don't know, I'm not sure, but uh, maybe it will be different groups, and compare them, uh, you will get the different uh, result uh, in comparison with uh, grouping, with cluster analysis, or 
are the uh, results of analysis of, the, uh, of other types of analysis because uh, this methodology consists not only predeterminal uh, information, but invisible, inf unforeseen information, patterns, invisible and unforeseen structures in multidimensional sphere. Task two, estimate the most significant factors of human de development index on the basis of regression trees using data sets. Uh, we will send uh, the special fold folder for any 20 or 25 countries with explanation. Note that you can use factor indicators taking into account legs of the influence. Significant factors of human development index, we will get uh, with the regression trees methodology. And also it is very important uh, the invisible, uh, unforeseen links between these factors, uh, the different uh, level of the influence to the target uh, variable, the lack uh, links uh, interconnections between the factor variables. Using uh, package fast cluster and the H class function, estimate the anomalous units in the data sets for countries represented in UN data folder by indicators. You see the list of indicators. Uh, also, we uh, will present the folder with uh, the initial data. And it's very interesting to estimate the outlier uh, using uh, H class and the fast class functions, uh, H class function or fast class package. Uh, they are, there are some arguments and um, you should to choose uh, the, the special marks of these arguments uh, for the estimation of outline. I, of course, I can help, uh, but um, maybe not for tomorrow. <laughs> in future, in future, I think we can cooperate, we can uh, send the letters to each other and to solve such problems. Yeah, okay. Please contact uh, me with this uh, issues. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Um, Dr. Professor Elena Zarova and their colleagues. Um, thank you for your um, warm, warm welcome to us and your um, effort and time for doing this for us. So I'm going to pass the mic to our host for some com uh, for some announcements. Yeah, hello. Thank you also from my side. Fr thank you for the great talk and the interesting tasks. I'm already excited to try the tasks. Um, yeah, uh, thank you all for your participation. For us, this was really a great meeting. Tomorrow is the second day of the webinar, and we have a little um, surprise. We have a little surprise for you. So um, you can present your R results if you want to. If you try the tasks, you can present them tomorrow if you want to share your results and if you want to share what you have done and also to get feedback. It is a great chance to get feedback. So is anyone interested to present tasks, uh, present the tasks or our code? So you can now volunteer. You can just raise a hand or say something. I'll just wait a few seconds. And if not, you can just write us an email if anyone is interested in volunteering in 
presenting air tasks, uh, their air our tasks tomorrow. So I see uh, there are many volunteers. No, I think we will just any volunteer. Yeah. Okay, you can just write us emails if no one wants to volunteer right now. I know it has already been a, a long day. Uh, some other announcements. So just let me check the announcements. Exactly, the presentations will be uploaded in Google Drive. So here you see the link. Here we will share the presentations. Also, the recording will be uploaded on the YouTube channel. And as a third announcement, um, the 62nd World Statistical Congress will take place virtual next year. So it is always a great event. I would encourage you all to participate in this event. Are there any other questions or remarks? from anyone? Okay, if not, um, we have a next slide. Exactly, please answer the school form to reflect today's workshop. We would be very happy if you would fill out this form. Thank you in advance. Yeah, then if there aren't any questions anymore, I want to again thank the speaker. It was really, really interesting. I really enjoyed it a lot. And we will continue tomorrow at the same time. I hope you all have a nice day and we will see us again tomorrow. Again, um, the, this Google form will be the proof of attendance for day one. So please um, answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Um, again, thank you to Dr. Um, Elena Sarova and to the moderators, Dr. Um, Maria Frilova and to Elvira Dubrovsky for this, for this great time that you have shared with us. Thank you so much. Um, for the rest, uh, you can see the materials in the Google Drive. I'm going to upload it later. And um, see you tomorrow. Don't forget to answer the Google form. That will be the proof of your attendance for today. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, everyone. See you tomorrow. Hello. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everyone. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye bye. Uh, tomorrow we'll have a picture taking too, so don't be uh, thanks. Don't be waiting for your um Bye. posts in social media too. So, so to see your post. Could you please send me the link again for the attendance? Oh yeah. I'm going it. to share it again. Hi, Mara, can you send the link on the chat? Yes, sure. Um, I'm going to email also to you this so you cannot um, lost. I think yeah. email should be fine because in the chat maybe cannot be copied.